uh, welcome to the rate of polymerization lecture under the head of radical chain polymerization. Uh, if you recall previously we discussed about uh, um, uh, the different modes of propagation of uh, monomer units uh, in which we discussed about uh, the head to head and head to tail type of uh, propagation steps in of different monomer units. Then we discussed about uh, the experimental facts related to these head to head and head to tail type of uh, propagation is, uh, streams. Uh, then uh, we paid uh, little attention to the synthesis of various head to head polymerization processes uh, and we discussed with the help of uh, several cases and several examples. Now in this uh, uh, particular uh, lecture uh, we are going to discuss this uh, initiation, propagation and termination. So continuously if you recall that we are emphasizing the fact that this polymerization reaction usually carried out uh, with the three um, steps. One is initiation through which you can initiate the polymerization process and then uh, propagation in which all these monomer units and different chains of uh, uh, whatever polymer, uh, pro, uh, polymer chains are being developed in due course of time, they propagate themselves to form a bigger chain etc. And uh, the termination step uh, because uh, it is uh, equally important uh, uh, with respect to the initiation and propagation because uh, at, at appropriate time all the uh, all these uh, polymerization process needs to be truncated so that we can have the appropriate property, appropriate viscosity, appropriate uh, molecular weight so that uh, whatever polymer being generated in due course of time can be processed adequately. So, we, will, we are going to discuss uh, this uh, particular sequence in this uh, um, lecture. So, let us have a start with this uh, polymerization sequence. Now, the radical chain polymerization you, it can be divided into three steps uh, as uh, we are talking about uh, that uh, initiation that uh, the generation of uh, uh, initiator radical species maybe with the help of a functional group, maybe with the help of some other external uh, approaches etc. Then propagation that is the sequential addition of a monomer to the chain that depends on the protocol you are following so that you can get the different type of a pro properties of polymer um, which is required for your actual product. Then uh, the termination, uh, if you recall that we discuss uh, various approaches of uh, termination in which uh, one was the, uh, the neutralization, another one was the killing of those uh, radical chains, etc. So, these three steps are integral part of uh, radical chain polymerization. Now, let us have a look uh, about the initiation steps. So, usually when we carry out the initiation process, this is uh, uh, treated as uh, uh, with the two reaction in, uh, in series. The first of these is the development of a free radical by any suitable reaction. Then uh, the homolytic cleavage of initiator species I which is designated at I is required to convert it into the free radical, a process that requires the substantial amount of energy to cross the energy barrier required involved so that it can facilitate the propagation step or it can induce some sort of an energy to the reaction mass so that they can perform the polymerization reaction or they can start the polymerization reaction adequately. Now again uh, um, if we see that uh, um, based on this particular aspect, there are two type of uh, uh, cleavages, one is heterolytic, uh, you see that here two things are A and B. Now, there is a transfer of uh, charges, then you see that uh, these are the developed ions A plus and B minus and the homolytic says that is the formation of the radical that means this in a rough word you can say that this particular bond is break then these two radicals are being generated. 
so they can cross the substantial amount of uh, they, they, they may have substantial amount of energy to cross energy barrier which we discussed a couple of minutes ago now in uh, most of the cases uh, additional heat or sometimes uh, uh, ultraviolet radiation or sometimes metal containing catalyst they play a very vital role to overcome the such type of energy barrier or in situ energy barrier now there are several molecules uh, uh, which can undergo the homolytic cleavage uh, this one to form the free radical now you see that these are the again i am repeating that these are the termed as the free radical now these example includes uh, the chlorine and bromine which can form the radical when exposed to the substantial amount of uh, heat or light now let's uh, have an example of uh, these particular thing now here uh, the chain initiation now first example is chlorine now if you see we are forming this chlorine radical with the help of so it gives you two chlorine radicals similarly if you see with the help of a certain quantity of energy now let us uh, take some more example uh, of uh, phenyl ring now this is uh, plus br radical so this is uh, and bromosuccinamide let us take the take the example of uh, um, iodine this is the formation of iodine radical now here this kd is equal to dissociation rate constant for catalyst so this is uh, the, these are the brief examples uh, of uh, um, initiation step now other such examples includes the chlorofluorocarbon peroxide uh, halogenated amides uh, etc now uh, the second step of uh, initiation it involves the attachment of these initiator radicals uh, to the first monomer molecule to generate the chain initiating radicals now let's have an example of uh, these type of uh, uh, approaches this is uh, you can refer to as step 2 for initiation now let uh, uh, the monomer is represented as m now here m plus i which we dis, uh, we described earlier that is the this is the radical then ki is equal to m1 let us represent it as um, if we represent this like 1 then let us represent it as 2 now here this mi radical is the chain initiating monomer radical and the ki is the rate constant for initiation step now let's have an example of uh, this one this is uh, plus 
plus this is the iodine radical it is now you see here this one this radical is transferred from here to he this one so it can again start uh, um, uh, the polymerization reaction effectively now the step uh, consists of this uh, m1 which we discussed uh, in the previous slide by the successive addition of uh, large number of monomer molecules now when we talk about the addition of a new monomer generated now it generates a new radical with the same uniqueness as the previous one except that it will have a longer chain due to the addition of monomer units see um, because it acts as a seed unit for the further propagation so that's why it has a longer chain uh, unit uh, because of uh, subsequent or a sequential addition of uh, these uh, um, monomer chains now let's have an exa another example of uh, this one that is the chain propagation now this one is your monomer and this one is the monomer radical now you see that this becomes this one then again m plus this m2 radical this may become m3 and this m3 plus m this may become m4 and so on so similarly m plus m n minus 1 radical this becomes this one now let us say this is my equation number 3 now here the kp is the rate constant for propagation step so this is again a very uh, you can say a very useful thing uh, especially when we talk about uh, the propagation step the value of uh, this uh, kp for uh, most uh, uh, monomer in radical polymerization is larger than those usually encountered in step polymerization uh, let us have a, a foremost important thing in this polymerization process that is called the termination because uh, uh, it is a very impractical thing that if you keep on carrying on this polymerization step up to a very uh, up to infinite time and where you can you cannot control the things and uh, all the reaction mass will become useless if you are not able to control all those things so termination plays a very vital role now the chain termination happens when two free re radicals react with each other to form a stable or a neutral molecule therefore it is a, a bimolecular type of uh, thing like this here you are having say two radicals and they if they are combined together then they it, the, the entire thing will become neutralized now this uh, reaction is uh, thermodynamically very straightforward and uh, it is uh, very rare because of the low concentration of available free radical inside the system now this uh, low concentration sometimes reduces uh, the chances of uh, facing two free radicals to form a stable bond so this is a very mm, a very unique type of uh, thing in this particular phenomena so this phenomena can uh, also be explained uh, with the help of a free energy because the, you see that the gibbs free energy is uh, very vital uh, plays a very vital role in deciding the fate of any kind of a chemical reaction whether it is a polymerization reaction or normal reaction now this gibbs free energy barrier for such reaction is uh, very high due to higher entropy inside uh, the reaction system uh, however, the active sites of uh, reaction system can evolve to overcome this type of entropic barrier uh, 
by positioning two radical intermediates adjacent to each other. Uh, the termination step of a free radical occur usually occurs in two ways either by a coupling uh, reaction or a combination reaction um, this uh, bimolecular interaction of uh, two radical to form uh, one saturated polymer. Let us have a look about this uh, uh, particular example. Here this is uh, we are talking about the, the combination reaction. Now, this is uh, the two free radicals. Now, here this is KTC, this is the rate constant of termination in coupling reaction. Now, you see the neutralized molecule will become like this. So, so this is uh, the neutralized one you see that there is no free radical present in, in this particular molecule. So, K T C is equal to the rate constant uh, for termination in coupling or combination reaction. Now, uh, another uh, termination protocol is uh, this is by the disproportion reaction. Now, the radical hydrogen that is uh, the beta to 1 radical center is moved to the another radical center. So, by this way it can occur in the polymerization radical chain polymerization step. Now, this results in two polymer molecules being shaped one saturated one another one is uh, unsaturated one. Let us have a, a, a representation of uh, these uh, disproportionate reaction. reaction. Now, here Now, you see here this is the radical one. Now, here this is the beta hydrogen. Let us have this K T D this is the rate constant for termination in disproportionation reaction. Now, this H is moving like this. So, you have you are having two molecules So, these are the two molecules which we were talking about. So, this is K T D the rate constant for termination in reaction. Uh, you see in the previous slide that uh, we produce two uh, molecules, one saturated one, another one unsaturated. Now, um, the termination can also take place uh, uh, through a combination of coupling disproportionation. Now, the two distinct termination modes can be commonly described as uh, this particular uh, protocol that is you see we discussed this thing a bit earlier. Here two things, two radicals are there, Mn, radical Mn and radical Mm 
and uh, this KTC is having its uh, usual meaning. Now, this is called the coupling one. Now, another form um, is K, KTD, this is MN plus MN that is called the disproportionation. Now, if we combined both the things, uh, we may have MN plus that is it will give you a dead polymer. Now, here the KTC, KT will become A K T C plus 1 minus A K T D. This is you can say represented as fourth equation or now here A is the factor of termination by coupling. So, this is uh, uh, the way through which uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, described this termination uh, possibilities. Now, um, the propagation step uh, uh, or propagation reaction will proceed indefinitely until all the monomers in the reaction system either depleted or they may get com combined with uh, some other uh, uh, molecules etcetera. So, this reaction or this propagation reaction uh, process uh, will proceed till unless it is due to the strong inclination towards the termination. Uh, as I uh, described earlier that uh, this termination step is extremely important and one should not overlook the importance of this particular reaction because of uh, the controlling of uh, the molecular weight. Now, um, uh, George Odian he described the typical rate constraint, uh, constants in termination steps and he found that uh, it is in the range of uh, 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 8 liter per mole per second or magnitude order greater than the constants in the propagation cycle. Now, in this uh, particular chapter we discussed uh, the initiation, propagation and termination step of uh, radical chain polymerization, special emphasizing that how these uh, steps are either classified or subdivided into the different categories. Now, if you wish to have further reading, we have enlisted uh, several references uh, and you can go through all these uh, references uh, whenever you feel uh, trouble in this particular chapter. Thank you very much.